Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Character Inspiration with Calvi Calv. Uh, specifically D&D, obviously. Uh, that's why it's on, on the screen. Obviously, my setup is a lot different from the last time, but it's been a while since I've done this. Um, I changed it up so now it's randomized. I'm not going to do good, neutral, evil, because it doesn't matter. Um, uh, Lineman is irrelevant. Uh, so the, the three I have come up with, uh, like I said, I randomized them. So I have uh, a half-orc uh, College of Swords bard with the smuggler background, a mastermind rogue minotaur with the courtier background, and a um, arcana domain cleric um, halfling with the urban bounty hunter domain. So we'll start with half-orc. Obviously, I'm on half-orc. Um, I mean, you know, people know that generally they're considered, you know, big, strong do uh, brutes, but obviously they don't have to be. Um, um, as far as, I mean, they're not ideal for bards if you're if you're going for the, the min-maxing type of thing. Um, I mean, but in combat, they're a, a great race to play, and College of Swords is a little bit more combat-based. Um, so yeah, go ahead, you know, half-orc. Um... Let's go, where am I? Xanathar's College of Swords. Essentially, you're, you're a bard. Like all bards, you, you know, travel around for stories and and tales and uh, whatnot, um, collecting knowledge uh, like, a, like a musical wizard. <sighs> um, difference is the College of Swords uses their weapons as part of their performance. So like it says, it's... Uh, uh, sword swallowing, knife throwing, and juggling, and mock combats, um, and s the smuggler background, I mean, you're a smuggler, it's pretty, it, it's specifically boats, um, or ships, or whatever, water vehicles, um, so the idea I had was, um, this half-orc, uh, pick up bard stuff, um, obviously somehow got into it with the wrong crew, um, and their cover, essentially, it's, it's a ship that travels around. It's a, a booze cruise or, you know, uh, like an experience or, you know, a cruise ship or anything like that. Um, and essentially, they use probably for the more high-end people uh, who want to go on, you know, pay for, you know, this experience, as it were. Um, and essentially, this character performs on said cruise and then... You know, and th that's and that's the kind of the cover story for them smuggling things. So they go from, you know, port to port, uh, you know, with people going exactly like a cruise ship, um, you know, traveling up and down a coast or waterway or whatever, um, and they just smuggle stuff while they're doing it, um, and that's the cover. And so the idea, this character could start if the gr whole group wanted to be, you know, in this concept of maybe not not all smugglers, obviously, but maybe the entire party is based on this boat, then that would be a good thing just to have a campaign on this boat and as it travels around and they can do things as they come into the new cities. Um, but uh, not necessarily. Maybe maybe this character stop, had to stop doing that because uh, they got caught, their ship got caught or whatever, and they're on the run, or maybe uh, their captain essentially was like, oh, they had nothing to do with it. They, they knew nothing about it. It was all me. And, so they got off, but maybe people are looking at them, looking for them. So they can, they, they don't do that anymore. But obviously with the, with the background uh, feature, they can, they can still, you know, they still know people. Um, and, you know, they, as a class, I mean, it's a bard, which is kind of good all around. Uh, oh, that's half orc. I mean, obviously half orc would be good in a fight. Uh, role playing would be good. Um, because, you know, you got the bard. Oh, I didn't even go to Bard. Bard. I mean, you could cast spells. It would, it would be an interesting character. All three of these characters, kind of, the what I randomly rolled is kind of fantastic. So, the second one uh, is a Minotaur. We'll go to Guildmaster's Guide. Minotaur, kind of the same thing. It's, you know, you're, it's, they're just bigger and broodier than, uh, than half-orcs are. Uh, all of their abilities are combat-based pretty much, um, which is unfortunate they don't get anything non-combat based, because I mean, even Intimidation or Persuasion, it's still kind of. Um, so, uh, let's see, I think I have a court here. Yeah, essentially you worked in a court, 
you know, or a noble court or with, you know, bureaucracy. Um, and the rogue, you know, you're, you're a thief, a sneak, you know, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then, hold on, I have to get to Mastermind. I should have saved the page. Essentially, you're a mastermind. Spies, courtiers, boom, look at that. Accidentally, perfectly aligned. Um, but you're a minotaur, so nobody's going to expect you to be, you know, intelligent or um, sneaky, deceptive, anything like that. Uh, especially with, you know, if if you go with the, what the race, racial abilities give you. But if you went with, um, I think Gabe Games has his, uh, based on class, instead of based on uh, race stuff, which is way better. Um, although they did fix orcs no longer get a minus two intelligence and kobolds no longer get a minus two their strength. So that's pretty cool. Um, but essentially, this character just, he, he, he just stands around. Or they. It doesn't have to be a he. Uh, they, they stand around in pretending to be a bodyguard or, you know, and essentially that's, that's what they did is they're kind of um, not quite like the emperor, um, I'm sure there, I should have thought of a better example, but essentially like they're, they're, they're the one calling all the shots. Um, you know, it'd be like the Bane thing, you know, the beginning of, uh, the Dark Knight Rises, you know, they're like, tell me where he is. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm the one who's actually in charge of all that. Actually, that's a cool idea. I didn't even think of that. That would be a really cool idea. Uh, if, especially if you like, you dipped into Monk a little bit for the hand-to-hand -hand combat, but essentially, yeah, you're you're just this big brutish person, and people nobody believes that you're the leader. So maybe people say things around you that they wouldn't say around who they think is a leader. So maybe you have a person, maybe one of the other players, if uh, that's the concept, is one of the other players is the 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 fake uh, leader. Essentially, everybody thinks that this maybe it's a dark elf, or maybe it's um, a halfling, which people are usually think are shady or. Uh, you know, stuff like that, but really, you're the mastermind behind it all. People, you know, people ignore you, um, which could have theoretically kept you alive all this time. Um, people don't think you're a threat. Um, I mean, it's a good class. I mean, rogues are great. Um, they get a lot. You get a lot. I mean, with with this, you get two languages. I mean, you get two uh, two tools and a gaming set plus two languages. I mean. This could be a lot of fun to have, you know, a big person making tiny person voices. So it'd be a good role playing opportunity to play a big of somebody who's pretending to be big and beefy. I'm thinking of um, what's the name of that show? Uh, person of interest. I think one of the characters. Uh, it's actually the guy that was the the father in um, Us. I cannot, and also the the gorilla tribe leader. I can I do not know his name, but. He, like he was he was the leader of them and nobody thought he was the leader because he's this giant dude but he's super intelligent so it's kind of the same concept that your character can kind of go undercover not undercover but hide in plain sight as it were um uh what else was it uh, courtier yeah i mean courtier you <sighs> records and inner workings of any noble court or government you encounter i mean so you you know people I mean that's that that works well with mastermind. So if you want, to, if the game is based on kind of uh, political uh, stuff, then this is a great combination. Um, this, I mean, it's a great role playing opportunity. Rogues are good in a fight. I mean, you're minotaur, so I mean, some of your abilities are entirely based on strength. So you're hammering horns, uh, but I mean, intimidation or persuasion. So you might have charisma anyway as a rogue. I mean, you could gore and rush. Uh, you can make one melee attack with your horn. Oh, with your horns. Never mind. Um, it's unfortunate that all of this is strength based, which sucks. Um, but it's a really cool concept, I think. Um, and then for the third one, um, halfling. I mean, everybody knows. I mean, hobbits. Everybody knows what halflings are. Is there not a picture of Halfling? There it is. Okay, Halfling. Mer, tiny Halfling. Um, so yeah, it's a Arcana Domain Cleric um, with the Urban Bounty Hunter. So the idea I had was that your your cleric is part of a temple of um, 
Kudur Arcana, so it's a uh, a magic themed god or goddess um, like Mistra. Um, I'm sure that there are ones on other planets, uh, other realms. I just can't think of any. Um, I mean, I, I think actually, I don't even know if the if it tells you what other gods. Oh, there we go. Gods and domain are associated with knowledge, learning the common time to go hand in hand. Azuth and Mistra, as well as Corel and Lorethian. Uh, the domain includes Hecate, Math, Mathari, and Isis, the triple moon gods, and so, you know, anywhere really. Wejas, Bokov, Vecna. Um, and so the idea is that I had was essentially because you're a halfling, you're, you're kind of sneaky, you're urban bounty hunter, so you hunt down people for your church that are breaking the laws of magic. Um, you know, maybe people that are summoning undead. Um, and causing destruction or summoning demons or devils, especially, which works well with your uh, arcane banishment ability, um, your spellbreaker ability. Um, maybe that's what you were doing. You were part of a group and you traveled around doing that, and then maybe you're on break from that, uh, and or maybe, maybe that's how the group meets you, is you're on a job, and then uh, you just stick with everybody and the group stays together, or, you know, it's, it's, it's all up to the players and the DM. So it could be the entire thing where you're following um, an angel, you know, you know, who's corrupt, who's summoning, trying to cause chaos um, to prove that humans aren't worth living or something like that. Um, and so you're following after them, taking, cleaning up their messes, trying to piece things together. Once again, this could be this could be fun for uh, like an intrigue type of game. Um, I mean, you're a cleric, so you're beefy. Um, Let's go, cleric. Let's go. I mean, yeah, you're a cleric, so I mean, you could you get good hit points, you get good armor abilities. I mean, you're a halfling, so you don't get um, the best, uh, you know, good strength per se. But you're you got the lucky, which is always good. Um, you're extra sneaky. Uh, it's a, halflings are a good race all around. I mean, all three, all races have have. I, I hate humans. I think it's pretty much the only race I think is useless. Um, but, oh, I didn't even look up Urban Bounty Hunter, which I think is in Sword Coast anyway. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, yeah, you just, you track people down. The, the whole character is you, you are, uh, I'm, I'm sure that there are examples in movies and comics and shows or whatever that, that you're just, your job is to, you hunt down people that break the laws of magic, um, which I think would be a really cool idea, especially because people would be, nobody's expecting a, a halfling to be the one that shows up to wrangle them. Everybody'd be like, oh, they're, you know, the, the Templar are coming, they're coming to kick down our door and take us, and you're like, all right, let's go, and then, I was not expecting that, I was not, and then, and then you're dead, <laughs> or whatever. Um... So, I think it'd just be really cool. Um, and, anyway, you know, Urban Bounty Hunter's a good one. I mean, it gives you good skills. Uh, gaming set and instrument thieves tools, which are good. Uh, you know, you, you know the criminal underworld. You know, which, which would be cool. Because, you know, you don't have to be... Once again, alignment's irrelevant. So you don't have to be good aligned, per se. Um, but it's one of those, like, people who just, you know, steal from other people or, you know, people who steal from, like, vendors or rob noble people, you know, it's, that's not your problem, you know, if they have some information, you'll give them some money or whatever, and then maybe they won't steal from people, so then you're kind of helping twofold by helping it, giving somebody money so they don't have to commit a crime, and then, uh, they're giving you information so that you could hunt down somebody who's way more of a threat, it's, it's one of those things, like, uh, like Judge Dredd. Like in the Dread movie, you know, there's, they were there for, you know, people being murdered. They were they don't care about the dude loitering. Like loitering versus a murderer, you're you're gonna loiter, get out of here, loiter, type of thing. We're not here for you. Just don't be there when I get back, type of thing. Um, so I think it'd be a really cool concept to play. Uh, I mean, any of these characters, honestly. This is the frustrating thing is I come up with really cool character concepts and I don't get to play them. <laughs> All right, so that'll be it. Um, I'll try to do this more often. Um, 
but I'm going to be random. It's not going to be human. I'm not, since I did already like 12 human, no, I think 11 human videos, I'm not going to do human again um, for a while. Probably at least, you know, 10 to 15 videos. If I get human on my randomizer list, I'm going to just skip it and choose another, or pick, randomize it again to get a different one. Um, but I have a ton of races, all of the classes, including Artificer, um, tons of subclasses, tons of uh, backgrounds. Um, actually, I could pull up. Um, let's see, pull that up. Like this is the whole thing I have. You know, it's. I'm trying not to do stuff that's based on uh, location. Can you see it? I didn't even look. Yes. Okay. I'm not. I'm trying not to do stuff that's based on like something that's based in you know, Guide to Ravnica. Obviously, that's a guild, so that's something that could be anywhere, but something that's specific to, like, Baldur's Gate, you know, from uh, the Descent of Avernus, that doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah, I got tons of races, 14 classes, and then I think 40, 49, yeah, 49 backgrounds, 37 races. So this this is a lot of stuff. I have a lot of stuff, and I'm going to keep it random so that it's more fun for me as a, as a person creating this, so that it's not frustrating and trying to just do the same thing. It, it, the, making it random makes it more interesting and fun for me instead of just being like, oh, well, I did, I did, you know, half orc fighter, now I gotta do half orc cleric, you know. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Catch you all next time. Have a good one. Bye.